I had a friend of mine who was having some trouble with his business recently. And uh, he had said to me, you know, John, I want to do similar to what you're doing. I just want to write all day. And I said, so what's the problem? And he said, well, the problem is this. When I just write all day, my business struggles. And when my business struggles, I, I, I can't write all day. And I'm standing there and I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm waiting for the punchline. You know, I'm expecting something. Because all, the, all he's doing is like stating the obvious at this point. And uh, I said, so what's the issue? I said, you know, when, when you've no business coming in, it means you've no distraction preventing you from writing all day. He says, yeah, but when I've no business coming in, I've no money. And without any money, I've no you know, money to feed the habit. I said, oh, so let me get this right. You don't just want to write all day. What you actually want is for your business to thrive and succeed and for you to be able to write at the same time. And he said, uh, well, yeah. I said, okay, then you need to ask for something completely different <laughs> for what you, than what you've just asked for. What you need to ask for is uh, people around you to help your business continue to succeed while you're writing your book. See, in life, you know, we think we know what we want. We think we know what we want when we're asking. We think we know what we're asking, but in reality, we actually don't. I had a similar situation myself, and that's the reason that I bring up that topic. Um, because when I began writing, all I wanted to do was literally write all day, every day, you know, and, uh, and not have any distraction at all, and become, you know, enormously financially successful to, to, you know, provide, you know, me the ability to continue doing that. But what I hadn't bargained for was the exact same as my friend um, had uh, encountered, which was as soon as you say, you know, you just want to write all day, every day. Well, God, divine spirit, source, universal mind, whatever you want to call him. I call him God or the divine spirit. We'll put that into action. <laughs> my situation was a little bit more because I had uh, custom orders in which hadn't yet been completed and you know I had basically God saying to me why would why on earth are you asking for more when you haven't completed what you've already got and that's the hilarity of it we need to be really really careful with what we ask for what we do how we think because as you heard me say before you know thinking and acting are literally microcosm microcosms of a millisecond aside from uh, apart from each other it takes point zero nine of a second to think something and act upon it that is why your brain must be trained that is why you have to be really careful and specific when you use the words I am when you use the words I am obviously we've covered this in other teaching you are evoking the divine spirit of God and putting God into action essentially uh, the universal I am you know was first written about in, uh, in the first five books of the, the Torah which was in the Bible and it can be found you know, those two uh, words can be found all through religious text all across the world when you say that you are sick, you are unhealthy, you are, and you use the words I am, then you are actually speaking those things into action over yourself. That is why whenever I use the words I am, I only ever finish it with that which either I am or I desire to become. I'll give you a prime example. You'll never ever hear me say the words I am and finish it up with, you know, worthless, faithless, faultless, mindless, dumb, stupid, um, you know, ill, any of those kind of things, you will always hear me speak the words, I am a genius, I am capable of doing whatever I need to, to make this happen, I am capable of receiving divine guidance in this moment, I am financially blessed, I am prosperous, I am wealthy, both of mind, body and spirit. I am healthy, I am the divine opulence of God Almighty, because our inner core is divine spirit. You've got so many people, you know, that these horror films that they want to watch, that is basically their life playing out. As I was saying the other day, 
for for anyone who was uh, paying attention, the external always, always, always reflects the internal. You look at some of these, you know, um, life coaches that are around and they're talking about health and fitness, but they look dreadful. I mean, they look absolutely dreadful. And they will, they will be the exact same ones that will encourage you, you know, put your big boy britches on, you know, man up, grow a set, whatever you want the phrase to be. And, you know, you've enough time to sleep when you're dead. Me personally, I like taking naps, and the reason I like taking naps is because God, in his infinite wisdom, divided up our days into three eight-hour periods. The first two are to act, and the last one is to get over all the stuff that you've done during the day. It is really important that you become self-aware stop listening to a lot of these life coaches that are out there because they will destroy you when I listen to them talking so angrily and so negatively and then they call it passion I think dude you couldn't even spell passion if I handed you a dictionary you wouldn't even know what it meant if I handed you a thesaurus and that's frightening it is frightening that people are so willing to give these people so much power in being angry and frustrated and their lives are a mess and their lives bear no semblance to anything that they are teaching them. At least with me, I tell you about the up and downs, you know, and the emotions that follow. But getting back to the point, you must be aware and you must become aware of how you speak, how you think, what you think on and what you spend your time focusing on. But you must, more importantly than anything else, be very, very careful about what you wish for and about what you want to put into your life. Because here's the thing, as soon as you start uttering the words, I am or I desire or I want to be or, or whatever it might be, as soon as you start putting that divine spirit into action, what you are asking for will manifest in one, for it, one form or another. The external always reflects the internal. You don't believe me? Just look around at five of your closest friends and tell me how they're doing. If they're living in squalor, they have no money, they live in miserable surroundings, well, guess what? The chances are that that's how they're feeling on the internal. How do I know this? Because that's how I felt for so many years. When I started getting my mind into opulence and divine and I shifted it from the physical into the spiritual, my entire world began to change. It doesn't mean that, you know, there weren't times when, you know, there was difficulty and struggle. But it meant that I knew how to get back to my core, I knew how to get back to my source, and I knew how to get things working in balance again. All of life is balance. All of life is balance. Balance is key. You've heard me say it so many times. I doodled my way through a, a bit of a book and had the outline for a bit of a book at one point in time, and it's called Balance is Key. An idiot it talks about a a young mother who uh, was going through some personal problems in her own and she was a mother to like five or six kids completely and utterly out of balance in her own life and felt that she needed to be like one of these you know American westernized entrepreneurs that have it all that are super mom and people then say to me oh well you should be praising these people no I shouldn't I shouldn't praise stupidity and I get that that's alienated, you know, quite a lot of people. But you've got to wake up, folks, and you've got to ask yourself, okay, you're an entrepreneur, you're successful. Success to you comes in terms of money. But what are you sacrificing to do it? You think anybody's going to remember you when you're dead? No, you'll just be another dead entrepreneur. You have to wake up and you have to see for yourself that if you burn the candle at both ends... You are robbing yourself 
That is why rest is an absolute must. That is why taking care of you is an absolute must. To continue that story, that young mother was an entrepreneur. She got involved with many different businesses and things. And one night she absolutely lost her nut when her children refused to eat their dinner. She took the, I don't know what it was, a plate of maybe spaghetti or something and threw it up the wall. And then asked me, you know, at what point? I thought that things had started going wrong. This is quite honestly, I thought things had started going wrong two years ago when you decided to be who you are presently. Because who you choose to be will only expand. It will never contract until you stop it. Unfortunately, that person didn't notice the warning signs and just treated it as, oh, that just happens. No, it doesn't just happen. There are triggers, there are warnings, there are omens, there are, you know notices, there are pain points, there are, you know, whatever you want to call them, everywhere along the road to the point that you have to notice for yourself, not somebody else telling you, you have to notice in yourself what's really going on here. When a person looks absolutely miserable on the external, I can guarantee you they're absolutely miserable on the internal. When a person is filled with joy and love and peace and prosperity and all that great stuff, it's because they're, they're exuding that from the internal. The reason that I use myself and my experiences so much in my teaching is because I've been through so much. I know what it's like to go to work and be terrified. I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur and to survive in that world with no money, sometimes for two, three, four, five, six months. I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and not have a clue if you're on the right path or not. I know what it's like to go to bed at night and be so tired that you can't even hold your head up you can't even kiss your wife goodnight. I know what that's like. And I also know what it's like to speak things over myself that I wish that I had never ever even thought of. But I also know how to correct it when I do. Namaste, my friends. God bless. God bless.